Hello friends, welcome to AC Astro. Today uh, we have a very special guest with us and uh, she is Natasha, a very good friend from UK. Uh, she is uh, based in London. Uh, a very good tarot reader, a Reiki master. She has like done distant healings and what not. Like she's too wonderful. And uh, today uh, the reason we are making this video is because we wanted to discuss... Uh, about career path, about career choices, that um, uh, there is, there has been a lot of uh, discussion over the years where people, they are just moving from their, uh, you know, education, uh, like, you know, they are just choosing the education, then they want to know about their career, which path or which field should we go in, or they should, and some people want to do their businesses. So there is a lot of uh, things which needs to be taken care of before you decide. For that, we have Natasha today with us. She's going to be explaining us more about this. Hello, Natasha. Hello, Akashti. Hello. Thank you, Pranam. How are Thank you doing, you. Natasha? How is life? Uh, it's, it's good. Um, and it's just so wonderful to be able to share this uh, discussion with your audience. Um, because it's something that is coming up all the time when I am um, asked to do readings um, for people. They're asking more and more about life choices in regards to becoming an entrepreneur, their mm. career choice, mm. should they start a business, right. and really how do they navigate that path. And I do believe that astrology can really illuminate uh, how and guide them on how they can walk down that path. Right. Right. And Natasha, can you tell us about uh, more of the healing part uh, which you do? Because I am so fascinated by that. Uh, you being a yeah. very important, like very uh, distant healing and Reiki, you know, many people are also suffering. It's not about only uh, career wise, but other people are suffering a lot um, and they need healing. And, and from such a person, some positive person who is actually not doing it uh, for um, like only cash and only money and you know someone who has a real connection and your roots are from uh, I guess from the uh, Caribbean right? Yes my parents are from the Carib Caribbean and I think more and more people that I talk to um, they you're correct they're reaching out because um, Akashji in this world today it's not lack of choice is so many choices that people become quite confused and they think, oh, I will try this, walk down this path, try this career, it doesn't work out, they invest time. And I think there's a lot of confusion. And so um, for distance healing, um, what I'm finding is people, I, I help people with just centering themselves, um, shutting down all the outside stimuli, all the outside noise, just to kind of center in themselves and find out, okay, what's my inner voice telling me? What are the ancestors telling me? You know, how do I hear that the, the call to action from the ancestors? Um, and does it does it resonate with me? Because sometimes we get these senses these ideas and we we're, we have inner conflict as to what we should do and sometimes we need the help of somebody else to step in and heal us to help us you know settle our mind uh, and um, move the energy around our body so we take it out of our head maybe we move it around our heart area into different parts of our body so that we can relax and right. focus in on what we need to do and the choices we need to make and it's all about informed choices to block out as i said all the outside noise and focus on a path that's right for each and every one of us and and you know as you know akash g with astrology and tarot they are for me they are part of the same family right. um they're always helping you to um give you messages uh divination to decide okay is this is this something I need to put more energy into or should I take more time and not rush to a decision? Uh, and yeah. that's how I see, you know, when I get requests for healing. Um, most of the time now, in the past it was, you know, will I fall in love? Will I meet the man of my dreams, the woman yeah. of my dreams? But now it's I'm getting more and more questions of, I've come to a crossroads in my life 
Um, I've been in um, in a job for you know X amount of years. Uh, we've gone through this you know um, climatic change economically. Right. Uh, the world's been shut down. We've people have been forced to do things, um, and money is an issue right. um, to do things that's out of their norm. And now they're trying to come back into a world that's very different, and they're yeah, trying to cool. navigate that that path. And so yourself and myself we're here trying to help them you know just get on their path and we can't give them all the answers but we right. can try and guide them and i think right. that's what we're here to do right so natasha uh, as we discussed earlier so we are going to be taking a dummy chart just yes. to understand uh, you know natasha how things go and uh, this is the chart on the screen natasha yes so yes so <clears throat> I will just give you a brief uh, thing about the chart, then you can go on, right? I'm, I'm just yeah. uh, going to be just explaining a little bit to all the audience who are watching us that um, right now we have a chart, which is Leo Ascendant chart, Saturn in the first house in the Ascendant and Rahu, uh, the shadow planet in the second house, Venus in the third house with four planets in the fourth house, making a yoga called Sannyasa Yoga. And from there on, Ketu in the eighth house. And um, Jupiter in the 12th house, exalted position. Yes, Natasha, so this is the chart. So if we talk about career path for uh, them, so what do you think uh, lies, uh, you know, uh, we see the 10th house, right? We see the 10th house and uh, we see the 10th house and D10 chart that how and what career should be. So you, you I would like to you to share some light on this. Yeah, I think, Akashji, the first thing that jumps out at me is, uh, I believe, and, I, and I'm learning astrology each and every day and trying to break it down. What jumps out at me is Venus in the third house. Um, and I believe that's in Libra, is that correct? In Libra, yes. Libra. And so um, Libra um, and Venus, it's, it's sitting within its own house, I believe. Yes. And for me, Venus is about cinema and beauty and luxury and film. Yes. And the third house is communication. Am yes. I right, Akashji? Yes, yes. So, yes, Natasha, very right. Because third house is the house of communication. And when the 10th Lord has gone and sat in the third house, that means, yes, uh, communication will be a very, very big part of this chart. Uh, in fact, um, uh, the life path will be communication. Or then, like, and that is not only cinema or art or uh, culture or you know, but uh, somewhere down the line, Venus is the planet who rules a lot of things uh, uh, related to messaging as well, like sending the right message, sending the because it's it it has now in in this chart when the sun's uh, where the sun is the ruler of this chart, the third house, the house of communication has been given to. Venus, that is um, uh, Shukra in, in what we call in Vedic language, Shukra. So now here it is the role of Venus to make sure that communication is done. Right, yes. Natasha? Yes. And and communication is so essential. Um, and, and, you know, if we're looking at uh, somebody who wants to go down a particular career path or start their business, communication is essential. Um, because film, as you and I know, Akashji, that's a form of communication, writing, yes. but it's how we communicate, it's how we translate language from one person to another, from one state to another. Right. And um, I find when I do readings, it's, it's helping people to not only look at their chart and, and then we're referring to the, the tarot cards, we're, trying to get them to understand how they can communicate effectively so that when they say what they need to say other people receive it i mean we can't control how other people receive it but what we want to ensure is that we're on the same wavelength you know? right right yes natasha so here uh, uh, i would like to ask you a question now that uh, so we have this chart in front of us and it is leo ascendant and uh, so now communication is the key, like the chart, the person, the subject will be uh, using communication as a very, very big tool in their life. 
but what if it does not work out what if media and um, film line and this doesn't work out what is the alternative uh, how do we look at alternative career now for for them well um sometimes if that's not the if you're not feeling that drive towards the the arts um it's the art of conversation so maybe you could become a consultant because i do believe akashji do correct me if i'm wrong but venus also represents business so right. you could become a consultant so um like yourself and myself well almost like consultants but we're using different methods to obtain that that information and that data so you could become a consultant um you could become somebody who translates language you know you may be really good um with foreign languages that could be a way of communication and also um communication in movement you know um so if you want to become a dancer um in my life i've worked with a lot of um performing artists and that again is communication where right. you're not using the verbal language you're using your body as the communicator right so we have to um kind of think outside of the box when we're looking at communication right. it also can be written communication you know you could well i think blogs are really important today but you could also be writing guides for other people so right. we ha i think it's important to tap into what are your key skills what can you do um putting in the effort every day um and building confidence and um and, and building experience in your particular field right and uh, so natasha if we see the chart uh, very very clearly it's very evident something is speaking out very very evident here and that is ketu the planet it is in the 8th house okay and uh, it is at 0 degree that means it is at it goes retrograde so it is at the most highest degree it can ever take it is at the peak so what do you think about now communication with the spiritual world here yes absolutely and um i think this particular chart denotes a, a direct almost like a direct line or a a particular um excellence with talking with the ancestors um you know uh talking with the divine the divine realm right. um and again it comes back to um shutting out all the outside noise and trying to um build that communication pathway between yourself and the ancestors and as we looked at the third house of venus as we said before you could become um a communicator uh, a consultant for other people so maybe you may have um divine skills with connecting with the ancestors um and you may use astrology or tarot you may be psychic um, um myself i do tend to have slightly intuitive psychic skills that i can mm -hmm. dig into um and that way again your it's communication um but you're having to i believe it's something that you have to train yourself to understand what the message is sometimes it's very apparent and it's obvious and it's a clear picture but sometimes that message comes very subtly very slowly and it's i guess we are the vehicle for that communication from one realm to the other right. and again it's about training yourself understanding how you're going to communicate that message from one entity to another from the spirit world to a, a, a friend or a client that you wish to help yeah so natasha very very good the thing which i was just listening to you and i observed in this chart is that uh, so jupiter is making two big yogas here so number one is it is making a vipreet raj yoga because it is the owner of the 8th house sitting in the 12th house secondly jupiter is exalted yes in, in the cancer sign yes so now uh, it shows a very very vast way uh, saying that this person is the person like a godly person who will be completely uh, a part of that world which everyone desires to understand like uh i feel that they will close their eyes and go to the world directly beyond imagination 
and get answers from you know from darkness from where no one has able has been there like they can find so many things because of jupiter it's a very very good uh, chart to learn because if we see um, uh, natasha jupiter is in the 12th house in the house of moksha liberation and exalted there okay it is the house of spirituality as well and in the d9 jupiter has gone and taken the 5th house again 5th house is the house of dharma and it is the house from where it shows that how we have got our past uh, or you know uh, your past life karmas that what we have earned so here placement of uh, jupiter in the 12th house again um, natasha speaks about spirituality right yes and i believe the kashji jupiter is in cancer in the cancer sign and that is moon emotion uh, right. tapping into the potential and like you said the darkness um how i see the darkness is the unknown potential exactly um, and exactly if we, yes and if you look at science if we think about science and um uh, um uh um astronomy and i'm actually an amateur astronomer with uh, telescopes looking oh, at wow. stars uh, we can only see 2% light really in the world the rest is darkness darkness so we we and when we look at um when we look at the planets and the stars and the celestial bodies they are communicating with us you know as yes. we can see in the chart you know where they're moving how they're shining and we again as humans on this earth plane we're trying to communicate and understand and decode their messages to us and being in the the cancer sign it's the moon again it's the emotion it's the human emotion tapping in again and the the is there a connection akash g with k2 and jupiter because it's almost like they are moving wow. within the same realm yes so k2 is now sitting in the house of uh, pisces k2 wow. is now in the house of pisces that is ruled by jupiter and yes. here uh, k2 is uh, supposed to be said exalted or in own sign it is like many many texts you know parashara says that this is own sign um gemini says it is exalted and other people say it is but uh, uh k2 this is the best placement for k2 ever there is no other good placement for k2 than the 8th house such people's advice such people's um, intuition such people's um, counseling can take you to a level of uh, like you know you will find the right path if you talk to such mm -hmm. people so mm -hmm. this subject chart is supposed to be very very good in terms of spiritual awakening of that person that person will be so so spiritual awake awakened that uh, and only a spiritual awakened person can guide someone who is in stress yes and um would you say akashji that sometimes uh that knowledge that spiritual awakening doesn't come at an early age sometimes it comes right. when we're when we're in our you know 30s 40s 50 and 50s and i think it's about we have to live life which is part of the art world and you know if you think of um famous filmmakers um sometimes they had to build their craft and it took a very long time yes mm -hmm. they started to enter into the field at you know say 20s 30s but they didn't really catch fire they weren't really in their stride until later on in life and I, and i think again if we look at this chart it's about it's a chart of development it's a chart of growing um if we look at saturn in the first house i believe it's a slow moving chart so yes. things it's it's a chart of delay not deny so exactly. um we again when we uh, i believe it may be the same for you akashji when we talk to our clients and they say why is it not happening now why am i not reaching my peak why have i not made my money or get to, or got to that top position i think we uh we have to reassure people that it's a marathon it's not a race and you have to move along life and pick and gain things and i always say this there is value in the struggle <laughs> i right. know this sounds horrible and people don't want to hear about the struggle they don't want to hear about the trauma but the more we 
we embrace the struggle, the more we face it, instead of running away from it, the more that we um, crack our heart open and tear it open again and again, and, and it becomes stronger and right. we embrace life and we become fearless. But the more we pull away from struggle and we look for the easiest path, I think things won't blossom. Uh, and that's what um, I always try to advise um, you know, my clients when they come to me for readings. There is a value in the struggle. You have right. to you have to embrace it because if we don't, life is going to find a way of bringing it into our pathway now. So, if it's then it's presenting ourselves, and sometimes the cards, the tower cards, will show things like uh, the tower, which people think, oh, you know, it's a catastrophe. But I see it depends where it is positioned in the in the spread. But I see it as a forewarning. If you are forewarned and you're preparing for some sort of uh, massive change in your life, mm. it, you know you're you're readying yourself. You're building your armor, and this is what I see: the power of Saturn sitting in the ascendant in the first house. It's about longevity. You want to build the muscle, the mental capacity for life, um, life's ups and downs, mm. and embracing the struggle. In fact, uh, uh, Natasha, as you were speaking, I was just thinking about the events, the events of time. Like yeah. now, you know, such person uh, will have a very, very good communication skill. So we were talking about career or the life path which they should choose. Number one is that they should choose something related to communication, something related to uh, sending a message to the world, something related to, um, you know, uh, expression, expressing, right? Yeah. Now... Here, uh, when is the right time to choose that career? Now, uh, Natasha ji, we are going through Venus period here. Okay, the Mahadasha is Venus, and the Antardasha is Rahu, which started from July of 2021. Okay, so can you please shed a light that uh, now you know Rahu being a planet and in transit? If we talk about Rahu right now, so Rahu is yes. in the ninth house. Okay, ninth house of Dharma, ninth house of higher learning. So, the the timing. So the 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 video which we are making is for you know, uh, actually people who understand uh, little bit planets, planetary movements, and you know what they should choose. Now, for a layman, it is it is very very difficult to understand. Uh, you know, the first they will have to learn the planets, the movement of the planets, the nature of the planets, the placement of the planets, and so many things. What we are here uh, today, I want to again. Uh, uh, tell everyone that we are discussing the um, the life path, the path of this subject, that where this subject's path will lead them to. Now, there are not only single factors that the 10th house Lord is coming and sitting in the um, uh, third house, so he will be into film line or media. No, no, we have to see other planets. We have to see the secret houses. That is the 8th house, the 12th house, the 6th house. You know, 6th house is also a secret house because it is the house of daily work, daily routine. Yes. So these four houses are very, very important. One is the Ascendant, Ascendant Lord, where the Ascendant Lord is, what is it supposed to be doing? The 10th House Lord, what is the 10th House Lord uh, messaging? What is the 10th House Lord giving us the signal that where uh, and what kind of profession should they choose? Then comes the 8th House. The 8th House is the house of secret knowledge. What kind of knowledge do you have? What kind of knowledge do you have and what can be your alternative career? Rather than your 10th house, what can be your alternative career? Or from where will you exactly get gains? Because if we read, uh, Natasha, from the 10th house, the 8th house is the 11th from the 10th. That means the gains, the gains uh, in your life, the real gains happens when we count from 8th till the, uh, from uh, 10th house, we count to the 8th house. It is the 11th house. From where we see, yes, if we do the work related to this planet, we are going to get gains. Yes. So what we have to do is that the 10th house, which is the most important house, which can tell you that this is the kind of energy that planet is giving you, the Venus energy, which is sitting in the house of communication. So now communication is a very, very good part I can choose in my life. And from here, when we count 11 houses, it comes the 8th house. It says that now we have to work that communication energy should be used towards Jupiter. Yes. So that we can earn money from that. 
and on top of that the planet which is using which is in that house is ketu again it shows that spirituality is the way from where they will be able to make living they will be their communication will be mostly with a with a, a class of people who are looking for answers am i correct yes. natasha yes and also akash ji if we look at jupiter um, and we understand the for, for our audience and people who were just on uh, trying to do, to understand a chart and they're at the beginning stages jupiter also represents justice so they we could look at applying communication in justice so maybe uh we may have parts of our audience that enjoys things to do with law or legalities that we both know is all about communication so they could be somebody's advocate you know they could be advocate for people in um difficult positions um again a consultant people are in a spiritual crisis but also they could be great counselors yes. because we um and if we look at uh mars which is a planet of energy in the fourth house scorpio again it's deep knowledge and when we are trying to tap into um communication and helping people maybe this is the way uh, counseling legalities you know even somebody like a paralegal you know something like that where if somebody's in a legal situation maybe parts of our audience may say i'm really good at research let me get onto the internet let me research that let me find the paperwork the written paperwork filling out the forms again this is all breaking down into communication and just moving a little further on uh, akash ji i think this chart is saying it's uh, the mahadasha is is venus so again mm -hmm it's it's building up for for about 20 years i understand you're in this chart is this person's in the venus mahadasha yes it's going to be a progressive chart a chart of growth so that's also what i pick up and and k2 comes in um because it's in the 12th house it's dream so again communications and sometimes you know we get our communications when through our dreams if we're driving the car having a shower and we have a flash um of inspiration uh right. when i have things like that i i write them down or i think to myself i'll just you know make a voice note i remember it because it may not help us at this point but going further yes. into our lives it could come in handy right uh, natasha uh, one more very very important thing now let's come on the transits that how do we uh time the events how do we time that yes. event that yes this is going to be happening or this is going to be happening so natasha here venus and rahu is going on and as we know rahu is in current transit in the ninth house for this subject and very soon it is retrograde in retrograde movement it will come to the eighth house and eighth house is called the dushtana that means a place of not very very comfort for a very pious planet but planets like rahu ketu saturn they do very very well in 6th uh, 8th and 12th houses you know why because this is this is the places where most um, it is the most un uncomfortable place like it's like a it's it's like a dance club for uh, a saint like you know a saint yeah. cannot go and stay in a dance club but a mafia comes and he he will love it that oh this is yeah. a very good place same way when rahu is coming you know the energy so right now this subject must be going through a transformative period when the 9th house the house of dharma from that the rahu is being drawn into the house of intuition and the house of deep knowledge and uh, you know because the dasha is also the same venus and rahu yeah. okay the dasha of the communication the dasha of the career and the period where rahu is transiting in in uh, in in transit in the 8th house for them again the house of mystery and rahu who is the bigger planet than illusion rahu is the one who can give you a lot of illusion a lot of answers material wealth gains you know and i always say that the 8th house is the house of inheritance natasha mm -hmm. that inheritance does not mean only money or inheritance can be your past life uh, you know uh, knowledge which has yes. come to you and you are you don't know that you have it in you and you were want yes. you want to explore that but for that the right time and the right period should come what do you think natasha yes uh, and it's 
but you're so right, Kashji, it's all about timing. And I think it's, um, uh, you know, getting to a point of being okay with not having that knowledge where you think, okay, I don't have the knowledge. And then sometimes we have to be both master and student and That's we it. move between those two. So, and, and maybe you're in the student most, so you come to, uh, people like ourselves and you ask for that help and then sometimes you are confident enough to say I think I know because Rahu I believe it's it's the node where you can have you know inspiration it it kind of shakes things up it's like electricity and I think it's when I, I would say I've had this conversation with um, a client recently and she's going through um, a bit of a turbulent time, just emotionally. Um, she's at a stage in her life where she's in a, a job and she wants to move forward, but she's crushed by doubt and upset. And she says to me, you know, Natasha, what do I do? You know, I'm trying to be grateful all the time, but I just feel like life is running out. And I said to her, if you, if you get the feeling to send that email to apply for that job, just send it exactly don't just send it regardless and and then you can say i've just sent it you can still feel i know this sounds crazy what i'm about to say but you can still feel miserable you can still feel hurt and upset be be with your feelings because you can't always feel you know positive all the time because if right. you're going for a particular transit like a antar dasha of rahu it's going to be upsetting things all the time you're going to be in the twist and turns of life However, like you said, Akash Chief, if you get that feeling to do something, if you if that knowledge starts to blossom inside of you and it tells you, get up in the middle of the night, make a glass of water, uh, pour yourself a glass of water, write this down, just do it. Because you don't know, once you do that activity, it, it's going to, it's part of a jigsaw puzzle, what I, I see it as. You may not have the answer right now, but life is a, like a tapestry it's a rich right. tapestry and you've got to it's that call and answer if the ancestors of god is calling you answer that call and then set, settle your soul right. and when you trust yourself okay i've got that I, I need to go outside and take off my shoes and, and walk on the grass I, I just have to do it do right. it do it and then come back inside yeah so Natasha, you know, I just uh, while you were saying, I got a very, very uh, uh, important message or you know a thing in my head. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, like how a child comes and bonds when he's born in this world. Uh, does he know that uh, you know whenever he feels hungry, you know, he, he, you have to feed him every every two hours like a newborn baby. Yes. What he does, he cries. Mm -hmm. So you know that. Uh, he has that knowledge in his mind already that once mm -hmm. I cry, I'm going to get this thing. I'm going to get yes. my food. So that means no one taught him, right, to cry. No. The child is just born. He, he's just born. He No one taught him to cry. But he yes. starts crying because, you know, he wants food. Mm -hmm. And that is the way of communication. That is the way of your soul or your body communicating with the other person that, no, I want food. That's why I'm crying. And after having food, he's sleeping very nicely. No yes. problem, no crying. So some things are actually inside us. Yeah, they were nice. Explore them. We need yes. to explore them. And that is what this subject um, is, uh, you know, that uh, there are many things inside them. They just need to explore and put the energy in the right place. So, Natasha, yes. if we want to, I know we can keep talking day and night yes. about it. <laughs> yes. If we want to sum up in a way where uh, we see that for all the people who are watching this video that they want to find out their life path that they want to find out that what kind of business or career they should be taking so what what should they do what should be they be looking at uh i think one of the best pieces of advice i ever got in my life was to go and have my chart read by an astrologer cast by an astrologer okay because I think once you understand the characteristics and the timing of your life, you can try and that again is like a, a, um, a guidebook. It's guiding you. What are your strengths and where are the weaknesses? Um, an analogy I, I kind of, you know, as we're talking right now, um, the, the vision I'm getting of um, 
of a chart it's like an apple seed right all the information is within that apple seed right we are the soil we plant the apple seed you right. know we we plant that knowledge inside of us right. we don't know that from the apple seed an orchard can be <laughs> can be grown from it we just see the apple seed now right. for certain people that say well it's an apple seed i'll, I'll get rid of it no i see uh, vedic astrology and you know to a certain extent tarot as the apple seed right. it holds all the knowledge but with time that knowledge unfolds it's innate within us so we cannot see from the get-go okay my life is going to go in this direction that direction there's no guarantee but we have to water the apple seed we have to plant it water it and then when we get the feeling okay now we need to pour more soil now yes. we need to do this and that would be denoted in the transits now the transits saying you know uh tap into this read more books do this i th i think that's how you can apply astrology and to a fair extent a tarot to your life if you're at a point of the crossroads and you're not sure what to do my advice would be to get a reading have your chart cast um, and then if you want further insight you can get a tarot reading just to break things down and you know i don't discount any knowledge i think knowledge is power when it's applied um in the most appropriate way and yes. that way you start walking down the path of your life and and it's unfolding and and that's how i see it you know so for me um the concluding thought is the uh, our astrology chart is the apple seed and we have to plant it right uh, i uh, very well uh, uh, remember the thing when you know what in the ancient uh, world whenever uh, natasha there used to be uh, uh, someone born so their chart would have been cast in india and uh, then you know during their birth only their life path was given by the astrologer that you know he is going to be in the royal kingdom and he is going to be this he is going to be a soldier he is going to be this and that so you know from childhood their focus was very clear that you know, i have this karma i have to do this and i have to be in such kind of uh, uh, job only and nowadays that is what i have been and we have been doing natasha you and me myself that we have been seeing a lot of things uh, in a way when as soon as we see the chart we see the 10th house the placement of the lord the connection the aspects on the lord and you know we can immediately see that oh you should be going into finance you should be starting your own business or no no business is not good for you you should be working as a job or a consultant so because business is you know such kind of thing that everyone wants to do business but you know somehow um someone has to just do a job and live with it someone has to do a business someone has to do nothing but consult and someone will get a lot of inheritance from their family and they need to then make sure that how they take it forward so a chart uh, the birth chart can explain a lot of things to us from yeah. where how we need to move and what we need to do in our life yes and once we uh, once we plant that seed within ourselves and we have confidence to explore it right. with that knowledge we can walk down a path and it may say you know you're good doing finance and we we walk down that path and it's not necessarily the, the thing we want to do yeah it may be it's not in that like you said it's not um becoming your own accountant it may be applying that those skills in finance in another realm so we right. have to be creative in our in um in our lives and right. and try and be malleable flexible um because life is always going to change but i think now um this as as i said at the beginning there's so many choices but with um an astrological chart it kind of narrows it down so you get a better idea of where you can focus your energies right. and you know try that out sometimes it doesn't work and you can try something else out but it it's it you know at least you've got some guidance and i right. think once you have a bit of guidance you're you're never going to be alone so right. um yes. again again natasha an instance so when we are young and we are, when we are small and we want to cross the road yeah right we just do not go and cross the road we take guidance yeah. from our parents that you know uh, your parents will say that no 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 look left look right is there any yeah. car coming is there no cross the road this is the way to do same way for your life crossing you need guidance and astrology tarot numerology 
uh, vastu and you know uh, reiki and all these alternative healings and you they are just the tools to find the right answer for your life crossing yeah. the right yeah, time absolutely. for your crossing it's like you you know the car is coming and we cross we will bump into the car and we will be so same way we have to just wait for the right time to cross the road right yeah. natasha and and whilst we're waiting and um, um, we're not waiting in vain akashji we're preparing you exactly. know because we have to and i think this is the beauty of us of astrology because if we're looking at transits and time periods it may say you know next year that is going to be that is going to be your breakout year but this time is not dormant this Perfect. time you start preparing this time you 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 go to the gym or you walk outside you listen to your music you 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 get yourself ready because if that time comes and you're not prepared you're not you're not utilizing the best of it you're not capitalizing right and i think that is you know again we have to understand the environment so it's not just walking out into the road blindly your parents are guiding you they think look at the lights look at your surroundings understand your surroundings build that confidence and then when it and then if the if the environment changes you are already kind of sharpened your skills for a changing environment and i think again that's where the beauty of astrology and tarot is okay yes. the time may not be now but you can be in preparation so right. you can embrace everything that your chart is going to unfold for you at the right time natasha wonderful wonderful talking to you wonderful understanding yes. so many things wonderful for all the people who are listening to this video and you know uh, as we are speaking natasha we um, our channel has made uh, 20000 subscribers and you know that's a very big uh, achievement for us uh, and uh, connecting to uh, like kind souls like you who are here to guide other people in the right way for vedic astrology not greedy thinking about you know rather than putting our interest first other people's interest uh, very very blessed to have you on our channel today and you know it was beautiful and i think uh, natasha if your time allows i would request you to give more such sessions for our uh, listeners and viewers who want to understand so now you know next time we can be talking about relationships we can be talking yeah. about uh, in so many aspects of our life uh, uh, your kids you know and how do we look yeah. about them in your chart so thank you natasha thank you for your time i know it's uh, i told you told me that there is strong in your place and still you took out time for this um, <laughs> thank you so much natasha it means a lot Yes, and, and I was just going to. Ask, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. If um, your audience, if they enjoy these conversations and they'd like us to continue, and if they have any suggestions on, you know, big topics right, that we right. can break down and have discussions, um, I think that would be wonderful because the more we can share knowledge and break things down and help to uh, simplify. Uh, astrology the more that we are empowering people to take control of their life to uh, make informed choices but also enjoy astrology because it's so fascinating that the more i look at this chart now i'm thinking i need to look at my chart i now need to decode more and more so yeah. it's fantastic so if yeah. if there's any subjects that your audience would like us to break yes, down yes, i think um, they are going to be loving this uh, and uh, anyone who wants to connect for anyone who's in europe and uh, in uh, you know the same time zone and natasha or anywhere in the world if you want to connect yeah. with natasha it's going to be a i guarantee guarantee it's going to be a life changing experience for you uh, natasha i've put the contact details it is healing with natasha channel at gmail.com as well as uh, natasha has her own youtube channel she has just started uh, because i think she was very shy to come on the screen <laughs> but yes i have convinced her now and she will be regularly coming and giving us a lot of knowledge so thank you so much natasha for coming and uh, i hope that uh, you have a blessed day and all the audience yes. who are watching this have a blessed blessed uh, time of their lives yes thank you so thank much you. Happy days.